Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In today's video, I'm kind of hoping that I can test the difference between beach worms and soft plastic worms, but I'm not sure whether it's going to pan out that way or I get the right conditions. But either way, I'm pumped. I'm excited about catching a feed. Also, this beach has got some really good structure that I would like to explore. So I think that's going to be really interesting and I'll be teaching you everything that I'm doing. If you're enjoying these videos, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I do appreciate that. Let's get started with today's adventure. So I've popped down, it's actually the middle of the day, the Aussie summer, hence the sunglasses, it's pretty bright down here. And really my strategy in testing real worms versus man-made worms is to find the right type of terrain where I don't have to cast too far because when you're fishing with soft plastics and worms you're not using a heavy jig head so you can't cast a long way. So I'm picking a few little gutters close to, close to shore and I'm going to fish with bait first so that my plan is to find some whiting so that I know that they're there and when I know that the whiting are there then I'm going to test the difference between the real worms and the non-real worms. Now I'm using a two hook rig. I've got here, I'm putting a worm on a Gamakatsu worm hook. They're not a super long shank, they've got a sort of a medium length shank and they have little barbs on them to help hold the worm on. And I'm doing a double hook rig, fishing with two baits. And also what I plan to do later is when I find the whiting is I'm going to on the one line have a real worm and a soft plastic worm on, on the same rig, one of each. Toss it out and see how that goes. See, see if they prefer one or the other or if I catch whiting on both. So it's going to be, I'm excited to find out, see how it all goes. There's plenty of whiting around at the moment in general. So I think very high possibility of having success today. So I'm just going to head down now. I'm actually fishing I'm actually fishing right on low tide, dead low tide in the first of the run in, which is actually a, a proven good time to fish for whiting regardless of the time of the day. So here we go, first cast. There's a particular place I want to land my bait, so I'm going to walk out into the water a little bit. Just got to let this wave break. And I'm only using two small fishing rods because I don't want to use a really big one and then have a tiny soft plastic one. I just want to have something that's comparable. Now actually I would like to have landed a little bit further out. I do have to bear in mind when I do put the plastics on I can't cast that far. So it needs to be in the sort of place where I can achieve that. How quick was that? I only just threw my line in. What time is it? It's 20 to 1. Oh, this is interesting. It's not a whiting, I can tell you that. But it hasn't jumped out of the water. I've got to go for a wander. Because this has 10 pound line on it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Whoa. There goes the jump. Just got it here, so I'm going to try and bring it in with the next wave. So once again, when you're landing a fish on light tackle, there's no just skull dragging it up the beach. No just dragging it up the beach because something's going to break. So you actually have to wait till you have the right opportunity when you're using light line. But you can land really big fish off the beach on light line. No problem. Oh wow, check that out. I just saw this mullet jumping out of the water. This fish is now heading up this way. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep, come on. Yeah, that's it. Whoa. Now that's a solid fish on 10 pound line. I caught much bigger salmon than this in a recent video, although I can barely get my hand around it to grab it. It's so fat, I can... Actually, I'm struggling to grab it. I'm gonna grab it by the throat because I'm gonna just break its neck in a second, do it, a, put it out of its misery very quickly, and I'm gonna keep it. I wasn't trying to catch salmon because it's not that deep out there, but anyway, that's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna try and land in a slightly different spot to avoid the salmon. Well, I wasn't really expecting to catch one here, although it's always possible. I'm gonna walk out a little bit further because I just need to get about a bit further than I did on my last cast. So I'm gonna wait for a little break in between these tiny little waves. Although it's so beautiful, you could just jump in and have a swim. The water's lovely. I'm probably gonna risk getting a little bit wet here. Not that I really have to get miles out, but I wanna get right on the edge of the sandbar out the back. I think I'm going to go close to it. Yeah, that's better. I've always got to be mindful of my microphone because I've killed, I've killed one before in the salt water. I think I might actually need to walk over to the left, walk out on a bit of a sand spit to get my bait where I think the whiting will be because my line is kind of drifting out into the deeper open water where I could catch a variety of things. You know, this, this beach is so beautiful, but New South Wales, all the beaches in New South Wales, there's so many beaches like this, hundreds of beaches, probably thousands of stunning, beautiful beaches that are amazing for fishing. I used to live in Sydney not long ago, which is the most populated city in Australia. And yet all of the beaches where I lived were fantastic for fishing, heaps of fish. They're certainly not fished out, not at all. All right, so I haven't had a bite. I'm gonna wind in. I'm gonna walk out on a sand spit and just get one bait in right off the back of this little sandbar where it's all being churned up out the back. If I don't get a whiting, I'm going to walk back along the beach and pick a different spot because I'm not quite sure that this particular spot is meeting my criteria for what I want to do in this video. So I'm just going to head over this way. You'll be able to see where I'm going. See, there's a little bit of a, slight, a small deep trough in front of me with a sandbar behind it. And just up here, there's this little sand spit. So I'm going to walk out onto the sand spit and just drop my bait over the edge. This is so much fun. So I'm sort of going to be fishing sideways here because there's a little bit of depth of water just there. And this is a nice little shallow platform here. And you can probably see where I'm pointing where there's all the sand being churned up and washed into this little trough. So I'm gonna walk out this way a little bit and I'm really gonna be casting sideways. Every now and then the bigger waves are coming in and I'll probably get a little bit wet. But that's only when the big sets come. I'm just gonna walk a little bit further over here because I can see there's a slightly higher bit of sand just here and then I'm gonna whack it over there. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's pretty good. I cast my bait a little bit to the left of where I wanted it to land because of the wind. Now, typically that sort of spot would be really good for brim and whiting. And I'm gonna try a couple of these spots just along this stretch of beach. Okay, I'm not getting much drift, I'm just sitting in the one spot. 
which is pretty good. We'll see what's sniffing around there. There's got to be something in there. There's no weed. You can probably see the water is just beautiful colour. Just this lovely aqua colour. It's very clear, really. Now, I know that if my bait landed right on top of some fish, I'd get a bite straight away. So that hasn't happened. I'm going to wind in and cast out one more. Hang on, What's, what is that? That's a fish. But it's, once again, it's not a whiting. How's that? Look at this rod, it's just buckled over. Right in the back of that gutter there. I think I might struggle to pull this fish against the current because the current is going that way. So I think I'm going to have to walk in over here actually to land it. So isn't that interesting that this is undoubtedly an Aussie salmon, that this salmon was sitting right on the edge of the sandbar where it just goes in there. There's no obvious salmon that you can see in there. There's no school of fish. This guy's definitely bigger than the last one. It's pulling a lot harder. Wow. Man, it's still taking line. When I leaned into it, it just felt really heavy. I haven't made any ground yet. Just, just, it just eased off the fraction just then. Okay, wow. I don't have any option with these fish. I just can't pull them in straight away. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my rig. Goodness me, I'm going to have to keep going that way. to see exactly how big this fish is. I've walked probably 80 metres from where I hooked it. I'm going to walk out, out, out here a little bit, I think. All right, where are we? Goodness me. Just going to gently work him in. Once I get him into this wash out of the deep green water, he kind of get will get brought in a little bit with the momentum of the, of the, of the waves just surging in. But he's still just out beyond. Where, um, where it transitions into the deep water. Getting a little bit closer. This guy has hardly, I think it, I might have seen him jump once. It's getting a lot closer. Still not jumping. He's getting much closer now. Really, he's only about 10. I wonder if I foul hooked him. And that's what the problem is. I think that might be the case. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what's happened, actually. It's not that he's that massive, but he's probably not hooked in the mouth. Yeah, I foul hooked him. Hopefully he's tired out enough now. Yeah. You can see where this fish has been hooked. Oops, the hook just came out, and I'm going to put him back in the water. I'm going to put him back in the water. He's pretty tired, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be fine. Let's just have a look for a minute. He's, yeah, he's, he's, his tail's kicking. Yeah, he went then. So, um... That light 10 pound line wasn't even heavy enough to drag him up onto the sand really, it just broke off. So, I'm not really achieving my whiting goal in this spot. So I'm actually gonna move along to the next little spot because I wanna find the whiting. But how good is that? So, I basically had really only two casts, maybe three casts in that last trough and hooked two really solid salmon. I've walked along to the next little inshore trough. The waves are breaking a long way out the back. You'll be able to see that, but there's these lovely little troughs of water, which really at the most may, are maybe six foot deep, two meters on the inside. I'm, I'm only gonna have one cast here, just to see if there's any whiting in there. And if not, I'm gonna move along to the next little spot, because that's what I'm fishing for. head out here, just take advantage of this little sandy spit, just to get out along the side of this uh, trough here. Man, I feel like I'm in the tropics. It's so beautiful. But I'm actually on the south coast of New South Wales, which is, a lot of people associate the south coast with cold. It's not really cold down here at all. Okay, let's just see what's hanging out there. Righty, so I'm going to go a little bit to my left. Yep, that's about where I want to land. Okay. Let's see what happens in there. Just walking back to shore a bit so I get less wet. There's, um, there's not a huge difference between the high and low tides at the moment. Only about one metre. So this particular spot here would have one metre extra water at high tide. But you'd be able to stand right on the shore and just pop your line in this lovely little hole here. It would be another metre deeper. And there definitely would be a few fish in there. Oh, I haven't had a nibble yet. I'm going to walk back a little bit more. Just flick my bail arm over so that I can let a bit of line out. Head backwards. I need to be thoughtful of my camera person who's following me. Hang on, what's going on? I don't have anything. I definitely had a butt. Here we go. All right, so I'm hooked up. What have we got? All righty, it doesn't feel as big as a salmon, so that's good. It may be what I'm looking for. Coming in much quicker. Yeah, right into the edge here. Look at that. There we go, we have a whiting. This is my target species, what I'm looking for today. You can see whiting are a beautiful fish. They have extremely delicate white flesh. 
very popular for, for eating. See, my line's tangled up there a little bit. So I'm just going to grab this guy. Let's have a look at him. Yeah, he's well and truly big enough to eat. He's probably close to 30 centimetres, this guy, I would say. So what I want to do, before I whack a plastic on and stick it out there, I'm going to have another cast. Just want to make sure that this wasn't a one-off in this, in this particular spot. Otherwise, I'll move along. But I'm going to keep him. I'm looking up the beach. I actually, actually think, that, I think the next little trough further up the beach looks better to me than this one. There's a real, um, I know I can reach the areas pretty easily by looking at it without a very long cast. And it's just a nice amount of suds there washing up, stirring up all the sand into a lovely beautiful little trough that I can get right on the edge of. But I will give this one another go since we caught a whiting. And you know, here I am down at the beach at lunchtime. In full sun, crystal clear water. But you can see, haven't been fishing very long. And uh, it's not boring. It's like you could catch your dinner pretty quick. I'm going to head back out over here. Just so that I can get out a little bit further. Um, so. Yeah, that's, anyway, we'll see. We'll see when the time comes to putting on a soft plastic worm. There's a number of different brands of soft plastic worms that you can buy. The one that I have today is a Berkeley Gulp. That doesn't mean I, could, I couldn't use other brands. It just happens to be what I have. But, um, oops. Walk backwards now, get out of the um, wet zone. I'm always concerned I'm going to get a bite when I'm doing this. I have my drag done up pretty tight, which means it's hard for me to pull line out because the fish I'm aiming to catch are not big and they're not going to break this line, even though it's a 10 pound line. So, although when I hook a salmon, I have to think differently. Now, on my last cast, I didn't hook that whiting where I initially landed. I wound it in maybe 10 feet from where it landed before I got the bite. I wasn't sure when I was getting that bite before if it was a salmon or a whiting. Obviously, it turned out to be a whiting. I mean, the salmon bite fairly aggressively, although it was kind of pretty solid initially when that fish bit. If you'd like to improve your fishing skills and also get to hang out and meet other fishermen who are like-minded and happy to share their experiences, their successes, their challenges, why don't you consider becoming a member of Rogers Fishing, my online fishing club. You will have access to all of my resources, all of my training videos. It's like a little trout rod. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you, Sam. You too. See you later, see you later Owen. Bye. Those guys watch all of my videos. It's, it was great. It's always great to meet people. I love meeting people and it's great to hear that they get a lot of benefit and learn things and improve their fishing. It's awesome. So like I was saying, if you'd like to meet like-minded fishermen and improve your fishing skills and have access to heaps of resources, check out rogersfishing.com and my membership. It's awesome. So many people are finding new friends and also learning heaps about their fishing. Now, in that last little trough, I only had two casts. One cast I got a whiting, second cast I didn't get any bites. So I've moved along to the next little spot because what I'm trying to find is like a spot where there's obviously a concentration of whiting and not just the odd one there, here or there, to test out the soft plastics. And I think this time I'm going to cast pretty close to shore, just, just off the edge of this little bit just here. So I'm really just going to flick it out maybe 20 metres. Yeah, just sort of in there. So I'm really close to shore on this cast. I'd certainly be able to reach that zone with a plastic. The jig heads that I brought down with me today 
are a one eighth of an ounce and a one sixth of an ounce. If I was using soft plastic worms in a river or a lake, I would use a lighter jig head. But because I'm in the surf and I need to get a little bit of distance, I can't go super light. So I'm thinking the one eighth and the one sixth, I'm hoping that they'll do the job. I'm getting a bite and it felt like a whiting bite then, so I'm just letting it take it. Hang on, maybe not. What is it? No, I don't have a fish, I haven't got one, but I actually saw something small jump out of the water near my, near my bait. Very strange, maybe it was a baby salmon. I'm just gonna flick this out again. I'm gonna walk out here onto this little sand spit like I did in the other spot just to get a different vantage point. Now the tide is coming in, but as I mentioned earlier, there's only a one meter difference between high and low. And the tide, tidal change is six hours. So that means over a six hour period, the water's gonna get one meter deeper. So it's pretty slow really. Okay, now I like where that landed because it's just in that kind of washy area off the edge of the sandbar where you would think food is being stirred up for any potential fish. So I'm going to come back further a little bit away from the edge. So I don't think that that was a whiting before that was biting my line. A little nibble then. Now that was not what you'd call like a big salmon nibble, it was more of a smaller bite, so potentially a whiting. Yeah, there's another bite just then. I'm just going to let that this fish play with it a little bit. Hopefully. Yeah. Alright, yeah, I've hooked up. So I waited for a minute then before I set the hook. And this is most likely a whiting, I think. I can feel a little bit of weight, so I'm thinking that perhaps I've got two. I'm not sure, it might only be one. Oh no, it's just actually, it's actually a small brim. Okay, so here we have a little beach brim. So there you go, beautiful little fish. Just hooked in the corner of the mouth. So, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> They've got sharp spikes. Um, so this guy's obviously too small. I'm gonna let him go. Let him have a little swim. He's probably about 24 centimeters, so a little bit below what they, the legal, legal limit. limit. And he liked that, he liked that bit of worm. I think uh, one more cast in this spot and I'm going to continue to move on. Now, I'm not addicted to beach worms for bait, but really they are pretty amazing. This morning I'm targeting whiting, but I've also caught a couple of beautiful salmon. I just caught a brim, so you catch so many different fish while you're using that one particular bait. And as you know, if you watch my other videos, I use a whole lot of different baits. But these are really awesome. Let's go give him a little whack out there. I've decided I'm gonna move up to the next little spot because while there are fish here, I just really wanna locate a concentration of whiting. So I'm gonna keep moving. Okie dokie, new spot. If I wanted to just catch dinner, I could have just caught it in that first spot. But that's not my goal today. Well, not right now, anyway. Uh, 
Okay, now that was a good position to land. Right at the base of that little drop off. Let's see what's out there. I should be able to hold bottom there. So I have a small star sinker on. I'm just going to walk a little, a little to my right because the current is going that way. I've also got a wind blowing in that direction as well. I'm just going to come around a little bit. So I'm a little bit more direct with my angle of my line. I'm getting a little bit of drift, not too much though. It's certainly not prohibitive for fishing. Although this, this trough definitely sweeps out to sea in that direction. All of the water coming and hitting this sandbar is draining out. It's coming into my left and draining out to my right. It helps having these Polaroid sunglasses. I cast over there, literally. Yeah, I saw where you cast. And I'm over there. I mean, you still can catch a whiting along the edge over there, but... Um, I'm going to get out of the there was, sun. There was a shark just as... True. Yeah, just... Well, where was it? Sam and your captain, there was a yeah. school of them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was yeah. Just well, it's been an enjoyable session, absolutely beautiful weather, beautiful conditions. I caught dinner very quickly and learnt lots of things, which I really enjoy the whole learning part of fishing. I, made a, I might have been fishing for 40 or 50 years, but man, I love learning things. I'm always storing things up there in my head. So I had had the plan today of hopefully contrasting fresh beach worms with the uh, you know the soft plastic worms but didn't really find the right setup or concentration of whiting today still a fantastic session and I'm looking forward to finding the right conditions for doing that for testing the difference between fresh beach worms and soft plastic worms I hope you've enjoyed this video I've certainly enjoyed making it I'll see you very soon in the next video